Welcome to Reread, where I'm rereading through the expanded universe in chronological order, and we are talking about the Star Wars comic book series, issues 19 to 22. This is the Twilight story arc with John Ostrander. This is our actually first introduction to Quinlan Voss. He wakes up in a burning building, I think. He has no memory of what's going on, and he's being attacked by everyone. Vili comes out of the blue to save him, and as Vili gives him a bla his blaster to shoot things, uh, uh, later on, when they get to Vili's apartment, Quinlan Voss doesn't trust Vili because after he's touched the gun, he can't explain why, but he knows why Vili's been trying to save him because Vili has a bet that he'll last until this long. So if he dies before that, Vili won't get his money. So when Vili eventually tries to betray him and shoot him, there's no, there's no cartridge in the blaster because uh, Quinlan Voss drained it. And he said, yeah, when I touched it, I realized you were going to betray me until a certain time because you had a bet on me. He was like, you know, I love Villy. I love Villy as a character. I think he's just, he, he is just a great comic book character. He's all about the money. He's a snake in the grass, but he's really fun. In fact, later on, Villy makes a new bet to try to recoup some of his money that says, I bet this Jedi is going to make it off the planet safely and not get killed. And he goes, you can trust me now, Jedi. He said, there's money, when money on the line, you always can trust Vili. <laughs> Which is true. He doesn't want to lose money. And he says that later on. He's like, he said, first priority, save me. First, second priority, save you, so Vili make money. <laughs> and that is, that is so Vili. I know John Ostrander had a fun time writing Vili. I love reading Vili again. And, and to be honest, that may be the reason I like Quinlan Voss so much. I loved Quinlan Voss when I was reading about him. But then maybe it's just because I like the Quinlan Voss Vili kind of team that they were doing there. Now, basically, he is trying to regain his memory. He knows somehow because he finds Aya Secura's lightsaber that that was his Padawan and she's missing and he has to find her because he feels this connection to her. And even though he's not really sure who he is, everyone keeps calling him a Jedi. He doesn't think he's a Jedi. He doesn't even know. And he's kind of, kind of, he, he's kind of being tempted and swayed to the dark side. And the council realizes immediately there's something wrong with Voss. We need to go investigate. We need to go retrieve him, you know, from Narshada and, you know, before he kind of turns to the dark side. So as he's looking for Aya Secura, the Jedi are also trying to track him down to kind of, you know, because they know he's kind of lost part of his memory. In fact, a few people know that he's lost his memory. And I'm like, what? Has everyone heard this? How did everyone know he lost his memory like this? And it's later because when he goes to his little home planet, the two people he trusts, they were the ones that drugged him. They fed him so much of this glittersome drug that it just blanked out his complete memory. Why? And they did the same to Aya Secura too, which later on he finds out that she was, he didn't really recognize her, but she was one of the Twi'lek slaves in the uh, den of one of the Twi'leks, of her uncles. Her, her, her uncle had basically mind wiped her too because they were the ones dealing in Glirsum and Voss and Secure had found out about it and they didn't want them knowing. So somehow they captured them and fed them Glirsum, overdosed them on Glirsum to blank out their minds so they wouldn't remember anymore. Quinlan Voss, uh, I don't know if it says this, but maybe they were the ones that kind of put out the bounty on him just to get rid of him. And since he didn't want his uh, niece to die, he just kept her as one of his gr dance girls. That's kind of weird. Your uncle kept you as one of the exotic dancers. Hmm, okay. That kind of family, eh? But uh, anyway, Voss is mad. He goes to kill the uncle. Aya Secure tries to stop him, but instead accidentally kills her uncle. She's mad at Voss. She runs away. Uh, of course, Voss wants to uh, chase after her, and Bill's like, no, we got to run. You just killed the main dude here, and all the guards are going to be on us. He goes, no, I got to find my Padawan. He went, listen, Billy. He said, Right now, she mad at you. You kill uncle. You made her kill uncle. He said, so right now, she trusts Vili more than she trusts you. And Voss looks at him and goes, that's a good point. Let's go. <laughs> it's great. It's great. It's good humor. Ostrander, really not known for his humor that well, but he really does good with the Voss uh, Vili team up. Both the, the, the double Vs, so to speak. Now, at the end of this series, of course, Mace Windu is going to find him. And he's going to fight Mace for a little bit because he doesn't want to go back to the Jedi, but then eventually relents and lets him take him back. Uh, and of course, this whole adventure, Mace Windu is fighting with that blue lightsaber because he made that trade, which makes zero sense to me in the previous series. So 
He's fighting with a blue lightsaber. Maybe Ostrander wanted to have a blue lightsaber. I don't know. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about one short one here too, is Heart of Fire. Uh, basically, this was in the Dark Horse Extra. Uh, I think in Emissaries of the Void, the Onibus, you can get this too. But it's basically... Uh, he, Quinlan Voss is in the temple. He's just come home. A Padawan talks to him. She knew both of them. She admired both of them. And Aya Secura gave her something that Quinlan Voss had given her a long time ago, which was called the Heart of Fire. It's just the stone. And she goes, I know you can take images off of the stone. And I know she had this on her as y'all went through a few of your adventures. So maybe this will help you give, get some better memories of who she was. And so she gives it uh, to Voss, gives it back to Voss, I guess, since it was his originally, and when he touches it, he relives some of those adventures that they shared together. And he thanks the little Padawan, I think it's the little Padawan Twi'let girl, he thanks her and he vows that he will find Aya Secura. So it's it's a nice little story. Remember, Dark Horse Esther costs like 25 cents. It's like a little newspaper comic strip. And it's, so it's not that much, but for, for what it's worth, yeah, it's a fine story. All right, folks, that's it for now. See you next time.